Hello everybody and welcome back to Wampleville and we're gonna return to a little bit of Song of Ice and Fire action here. We got some more of these Dothraki. I think they're still Dothraki horsemen they, or Screamers or whatever they are. It doesn't really matter but what we do have is a nifty movement tray that's all set up and we've got four more horsemen ready to go. Now we've done one of these before and we can see that right here. We are going to be painting the base to look like that and the the movement tray. However, this time we're going to use something different. On here we used weathering powders mixed with rubbing alcohol and other stuff like that. And we'll be showing these several times. What I want to do is piggybacking off of what we did over the weekend. Is I want to use some of these green stuff for liquid pigments here. There's a bunch of them that I have not tried. And you can hear, hear that sound right there. That is, each one of these has an agitator. And when you look at the thing here, well, it does say, you know, shake well before use, but it's uh, supposed to leave a powder-like finish. And I have to say, in some of our tests, it sort of did that because we did this over the weekend, and this is actually the winter wash and some of the rust effects that we did on this T28. And I, to me, it did leave a powder-like finish. For something that was liquid, it is a little bit easier to use. I have to say that maybe the rubbing alcohol or pigment fixer mixed with the weathering powders. So a little less messy, a little less messy. So, oh, we got the Roy experience. How are you doing? Yeah, we're going to be giving, well, let's see. Where's the white one here? You saw me using this quite a bit over the weekend. But we're going to try some of these other guys here. Haven't had a chance to use any of these. Actually, a lot of them, I might have to still even poke holes in the, ah, yeah, see this one here? I don't even hear the agitator going in that one. So I might have to rework that one a little bit. But that one's all good to go. Let's uh, throw some stuff out here. So we got black soot here. This is just our regular wet palette. And throw this one out here. What is this? Dark Earth. Again, you really do got to shake these bad boys up. Uh, I, I'm thinking also about putting them in some of these little cups right here. These are our watercolor bins. Here, let's do that on some of these before it gets a little too crazy. So we're going to take our contrast ones and move those out of the way. I'm going to grab a couple of these guys here. So that was the darker. This is going to be the burnt earth, it looks like. Hopefully, Roy, everything is going okay. Let's just uh, maybe move this out here so people can see we're actually going to work on something. So I'm going to throw this one in here. That's the uh, Dark Earth, Burnt Earth, Burnt Earth. So that should be pretty fun. Let's see what Medium Earth looks like. Again, got to give these things some good shakes. This one's got a little bit of greenishness to it, so that should be interesting. We'll chunk this in here. Ah, uh, yeah, I can see definitely much more of a green. This light earth looks like it's going to be almost like a raw sienna. Yeah, something like that, maybe. Here, let's uh, throw out another bin. I think it's going to match that color pretty close. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's darn near the same color. So that was light earth right there. I mean, I don't know. I just suppose you could almost use these on the horses too but we won't be doing that all right so this is our desert earth here uh, watching while you work uh, wasn't that a song or something like that oh no a whistle wow that's uh, pretty darn close so desert earth I might just throw a little bit of this dark industrial out here just chuck it over here. It's nice to have a little bit of gray. Speaking of gray, so they do have three different types of the crackle paint here. I just use this one. Again, 
screen stuff world. You could use the GW stuff too. We used several different things. There was also some of the Vallejo pigment on these guys. And just a quick review here. This is what we are after is to get this kind of a look. Let's see if we can do that with these pigments. If we have to, we, we add another paint. Some other type of paint. No big deal. We've got plenty of beat up number eight round craft right. Oh, look at this. This is quite literally, it's not... Oh no, that is one that I cut. Okay, I was going to say, that one's just plain old worn down. Yeah, let's just grab a couple of these guys. We have Deck Knight in the house. How are you doing? We're just going to have some fun with, well, basing. And then after basing these, the idea is to also break out the oils and paint with the oils too. So I think what we're going to do here, so you can see this little process happen. We've got our uh, blue tag. We'll just get these stuck. And let's see, it seems lonely in here. Well, I didn't really, I was thinking of doing the, what is that, the, the invite thing or whatever, or the Facebook event, right? I was thinking about doing that, but just, it was taking a little while to get these, the area ready. Let's put it this way, I've been working since last Saturday night to try and get this area ready for something besides historicals. It took a week to get the area ready to do historicals and it took an entire weekend to unready it. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was a lot of stuff that was brought out, needless to say. And this is kind of, I do like the juxtaposition though of, you know, winter is coming and now it's, uh, now we're in the desert. Although, we were in the desert for a while on Friday with with this guy doing this one in oils. So I'll just uh, pop this on here, get horsey number two on here. Now these things over here, the green stuff world, those liquid pigments, they will sort of separate over time in your palette. So just something you want to be aware of. But this is a lot of fun. Oh, look at how the icicles dried nice and clear. Back here, look at that. I mean, is that not super cool? How that just dries so clear. And you can't even see. Oh, look at this this tight little tiny one right there. Nice little tiny icicles. All right, number three. I think this, yeah, we just used GW skulls on this. We used a combination uh, tree bark here. These are actually, oh, what the heck is that? Gamer's grass, these these resin chunks here. Some of it's just leftover bulletin board cork. The, the usual. It, it doesn't have to be just one material, just one type. Uh, Bigs Valour, how are you doing? Uh, the work never, it, it really doesn't end because after doing this, I've got to record uh, another Dark Sword tutorial. And I don't even know where the heck the figure is that I was going to, okay, can I even reach him? No, oh, but now this is what's interesting. This is what, it's going to be the first tutorial that I record entirely in black and white. Yes, it's the entire thing is going to be film noir. With the palette, of course, the palette cam still in color. <laughs> and it's going to be, I'm painting what looks like, it's kind of like a dark sword version of Gandalf, right? Well, we're going to be painting the gray wizard in gray, in black and white. And people will have to, as I, as I kind of narrate the thing and say what it is that I'm using, people are going to have to suss out, okay, what is this actually going to look like when it's done? So that could be very fun. Maybe at the start of each segment, I, I show the color version of it or something like that. All right, so our horses, they're set to go. We've got this, just the usual Steino res. Usual Steiner. Hey, we got Al Capone. 
Oh yeah, Roy, that was just, to me, ah, it was so much fun. But it looks like Al got his GS... Oh, oh. So hope to see it in the next 30 days. Uh, where do you source your tree bark and cork from? The bulletin board cork? Like, this is just from Amazon. You could probably find this at Office Max, Office Depot, any of those office supply stores. I mean, it's that's not terribly hard to find. The tree bark, some of it's just stuff that I grab that's just kind of laying on the ground. And some of it is sent to me by a friend uh, down in Arkansas. It's pine tree bark. And then, you know, you got your bulletin board cork. Oops. And this stuff is fine. I just got this at Michael's. This is great for tree roots. It's it's actually kind of nice for this sort of desert foliage kind of stuff right here. So, yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff that's just uh, either laying around or easily findable. Now, what I'm looking for here is this stuff. One moment. My jeweler's blocks here. Just to make sure it kind of stays on screen. That, that's as, It's as much to keep it on screen as it is anything else. Because sometimes it likes to wander. We centered. Centered. And you can see this stuff is pretty darn watery. Pretty darn watery. So we'll mix up a, a few things together here. And, oh, look, we'll add some more water to it. Why don't we? I think we're all caught up on our chat, and let's get some of our darker washes in here and see what happens. Because, again, the idea is that this ends up looking like the other one and has the same sort of texture, that same kind of powdery texture. Is it going to work? You never know until you try. And, oh, this is uh, another reason why I've got the industrial out here, is so that our rocks get this slight bit of grayish texture to them. It can be, sometimes it can be a little bit deceiving with this stuff, because the color that you see is not always what you get, because... It's just the nature of these pigments. You think you got a light gray, what you actually have is a dark gray. Now, what is this one? I think this is the medium earth. Wow, okay. Or that's maybe the dark earth. So that's, uh, that's pretty dark. Now you see what I mean, where it's, it's not quite what you think you're going to get. Because that's pretty dark. I was not expecting it to be quite so dark. And actually, I'm going to use a little bit less of the reddish stuff. I like this a little bit better. So I think the red stuff was the dark earth. I believe this actually is the medium earth or something like that. And it is fun sometimes to let this stuff just like we did with the oh look at that so that was the i think that was the medium oh look at that you guys see how that's mixing together now here's some of that sandy color we're going to let those mix together and it's basically wet into wet very much a wet into wet can even water it down maybe just a touch have that spread out and let some of the primer do a little bit of work. So this, uh, I'm having some fun with it. It's just like how we used it on this. Except here we're just kind of focusing on the one color, the, the white-ish color. Uh, look, yeah, see when you let it go kind of wet into wet here. So we're adding some of the sandy color in here. You do just kind of have to let it do its own thing, though. 
And I know that is difficult for folks to just sort of relinquish that control and let things kind of work on their own. We even, remember we were doing the pre moisting we just took our little water spritzer thing and spritzed stuff and just started mixing stuff into it. You can do that too. But look at, look at what we're getting here. Hey there, Alex, how are you doing? Now I'm just taking a little bit of gray. I think this is, to me, this is really fun working like this to be able to almost let stuff do its own thing, let it mix together on its own. So I can still get a bit of sandy color up here. We let that mix with what's there. Look at all the fun different colors that we can get. They do, this was the big test. Here, let me. So we were trying them over the weekend. This was during the big, well, it turned out to be big tank fest. So this was the white. And you can see when this dries, it, it looks exactly like weathering powders. I was skeptical. No one was more skeptical than me. And I look at the rust over there on the back of that. And we got Lumberjack in here. This is another unit for the Targaryens. This is from Song of Ice and Fire. So I think these are the Screamers right here. And remember we did this with Weathering Powders. And now we're doing this with the Green Stuff World liquid pigments and here's some of your horsies and these guys well that's a kind of a commander type figure but these are your I think these are more your standard guys here so these are the archers back to my gray over here which oh yeah this was the dark one oh look at how look at how nice and dark that is it's weird because in the little my little thing there, it looks very dark, but it isn't, it's, or it looks very light, but it's actually really dark. It's crazy. Let's throw a little bit of our yellow up here. And then, let's, let's try, we actually haven't really tried this. This one has a little bit of a pinkish hue to it. And we've got Moe's Magic in the house. How are you doing? Now, this is more experimentation here. Uh, let's see, working on Stark Outriders. Now, did you just kind of have the one unit of them? Or are you going kind of heavy with them? Maybe a second unit of those guys? But look at how this mixed. That was, that was uh, I didn't force any of that. It was just wet. It was just wet like that, and I let it do its own thing, just like now. Just letting it mix together. We got Lady Bee and Brush Liquor in here. So Moe's, Lady Bee, and Brush Liquor all at the same time. How are you guys doing? You know what? I'm going to zoom out here so you can actually see a little bit more of this at once here. And we're going to tilt our camera this way. That's better. And we're also going to try and move this without bashing it into the camera. A little bit of gray over here. Just got to be willing to let these mix together. Just have to be willing to uh, kind of broaden the color horizon. Wow, that's a, it's incredibly dark. I had not, I've only used sort of the, what I thought were the darkest ones, and I didn't realize that one of the ones that seemed to be kind of a medium color actually was pretty dark. Who would have thunk it? All right, back to our kind of an orangey color here. A little bit of that salmon. Oh, actually, a little bit of gray here. A little bit of gray, and now we'll go with our some of our lighter tone again. 
And now the lightest tone here. This is our sandy color here. Yeah, Lady B, I, I have to say these Green Stuff World liquid pigments, the more I use these, the more impressed I am. I really... I didn't know what to think of them when I first tried them. I tried them on the terrain pieces, and they seemed okay, but the the surface that I was trying them on... Now, oh, now this is another thing. This is another thing. Sometimes you have to give things more than one try, because, again, when I use these on that terrain stuff, it was like, okay, yeah, it's all right. But then when I used them on that vehicle, it was like, oh, oh, look at this. Look what's happening right there. Check that out. Oh, look at look at that spidery stuff going on. That only happens wet into wet. That does not happen unless you're willing to let it mix wet into wet. It's kind of like a watercolor type thing going on. So, Lady B, I, I hope that uh, everything is well down there. I know it's got to be more of a morning time for you instead of the usual evening time. I, I will be doing at least one or two, I think, late night streams this week. Who knows, there could be a lot of streams this week. I don't know. It all kind of depends. I wish I could give you more of a definitive, yes, I will be streaming this day, this time, but... Things are a little too crazy for that kind of... Yeah, there's there's no schedule for that. Just like we're going to let all of this stuff mix together. All right by itself. Wow, it does some really fun stuff. I, I'm way more impressed now that the first time I used it, I just thought, oh, okay. But I was using it on 3D printed terrain and the striations of the terrain because it was printed on an FDM printer at not super high resolution it basically it was not giving me a true impression of what these could do but once we were using them on these vehicles that that's when I said wait a minute there's something here there is definitely something here uh, have I tried their paint revitalizer no actually I haven't even heard of that until you just mentioned it now uh, I, I assume that is for some of your, well, dead paint colors, <laughs> something like that. And to me, uh, paint never gets to that stage. It is long gone. The, the container is empty before it ever even has a chance to dry out. So, And I don't have many jars of paint. I mean, if I could, I would have as few as maybe just... 20 jars of paint, period. That's it, and no more. So fortunately for me, yeah, that's a, that is not a big issue. Now I'm curious to see what happens here as I add. This is more of the... That's your light sand color there. Here, let's dry this out, and let's dust a little bit over that over the top. It is giving us that dusty finish, though, I think. Uh, let's see. So the tank uh, insert, it was, uh, it's, uh, I could not believe what that would let me do with the acrylics. Normally that's something that only happens with the weathering powders, just like when we were you know, working on this with the weathering powders, except this is easier. This one's actually easier than this. And you can see that the colors are pretty darn similar. Are they a little bit different? Yeah. Let's get a little bit more of my light sandy color in some places here. I'm also, also going to take... Let me see if I can find just some kind of a dark brown color here. Is this the one I'm looking for? That's not it. This one. Because this is going to be distracting here, so we got to get rid of that as soon as we can. Let's just find another 
brush here. It's not going to be brown, it's actually going to be more like a gray or black, but I just want to get that taken care of quickly here. And it's not like it shows up anyways. But it will be distracting until we get rid of it. Oh, we got Wicked Elf in the house. And Beef in the hole. How are you doing? <laughs> Here, let's get our... More of our brown in here, and then we might even do a little bit along the outer edges, too. So how are you doing, Beef and Wicked Elf? Oh, uh, we are carrying on here with the Green Stuff World liquid pigments after our little tank fest and how we found out that those were actually pretty darn amazing. And how they gave us that powder-like finish. So yeah, that's uh, now we're using the white one here. And yeah, we did uh, our icicles. They are nice and see-through at this point. Just going to hit the sides of this now real quick. And already it just has such a powdery look to it. I'm not quite sure what is in there. It doesn't say what's in those pigments to... Let them be acrylic and still have that powdery look. Oh, let's see. Bilbo's brush. That's where the figures go. I'll show you in a second here. So, there you go. That is what you're, you're just seeing in the empty place where these guys normally go. Okay, with what's left of this, I'll just hit the edges of this too. And we're going to have to do these bases. The other reason why I wanted to do the bases first is so that we could potentially put maybe some of the Luke's APS pigments on there as well. Or the... Oh, what is that? The the different uh, ground cover stuff. Uh, is he doing good? Just done with my treating day. Now time to do the paperwork. There was definitely... I, I wish there could have been more. I would have loved to have been able to get to those two kitties. That would have probably... If I could have done it on Sunday. But given the fact that it was 95 outside and 207 degrees inside the house... Yeah, there was there was no way to be doing any live streaming, sadly, on Sunday. Well, that and there was no more voice left. That's why I didn't even record. I, I was going to record just a regular Patreon video. I never even got a chance to do that. I will say, now, it is going to be more difficult. You can't really do much of a sort of a dry brush stuff. Yeah, Wicked Elf, now, for my sensibilities, now that i just familiar enough with this game right here, if I'm doing units for me, I'm just going to make it like Kings of War, where I just glue everything to the tray. Ah, uh, look, look at that. See how those, those darker ones, darker rocks show through? So it's it's almost as if the... The underneath surface is lighter and the stuff on top is darker. It's just kind of a fun little surprise. People don't always see that. Yeah, it is a little bit more of a challenge to kind of dust this over the top. Here, let's get some of our more orangey color into this now. It's definitely looking pretty similar to our previous movement tray done in an entirely different medium, which is always good. I'm glad that I threw the gray out here. 
And I could probably still... Where's the light industrial? I think that was the... I think that was the dark industrial. But just a little bit of gray, because not everything has to be brown. Sand is not always brown. Trees, not always brown. Not everything in nature is just brown. Uh, I think it's... Uh, I think it's just, uh, yeah. Oh, hey, Sidrian, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm showing just fine over here, showing a fine bit rate. Which, and I, I do understand that because I've had it happen to me, or I, I expect to see in the chat, like, oh, the stream died, and everybody's just chatting away, and I just had to refresh. So I can't that this uh it can be a little bit deceptive the the lighter colors here they look very dark on the palette and then when you get them out here and then it's just the opposite with the dark ones that look really freaking light well that this tells me right here how effective this is that when it comes time for our which is now over here. I'm, I'm definitely going to use this material here to add the, the sandy effects and stuff to this. Uh, let's see, Eep Jeep was just watching the, the Hydra. Uh, is there a Spectrum 75? Oh, and the Diomedes Industry. How are you doing? Let's see, is this the... Okay, that's the right brush there. That one was... Yeah, that was a pretty wild one. Uh, my favorite one was the basing. Now, oh man, I meant to, darn it. I meant to actually have some of the pictures of the Muses of Delphi, the finished project. Well, that'll probably go up on Instagram tonight. Yeah, that'll probably be, well, maybe, yeah, tonight or tomorrow's Instagram, one or the other. I'm actually just going to, I'm going to see if I can even paint some of the skulls with this stuff. Now, I can only go so light with it, I'd have to actually... Oh, and here, this is the one time it is actually acceptable to have bleached skulls. It's the desert after all. And I do have some other kinds of tufts that I want to give a try here. So we got some smaller tufts here. Those are from Gamer's Grass. And... Nah, that's still a still a green but we might give those a try as well I'm gonna go back here to my darker tone and man that is really that is a nice rich dark I'm gonna mix some of my sandy stuff here with the gray and just make myself a lighter gray to work with Spectrum 75, getting some stuttering now. Might be, yeah, I, my bitrate is showing good over here, so. Just want to make sure I'm actually on screen for you guys, too. It's a little bit more of a challenge with big stuff like this. It does, it dries reasonably fast, I'd have to say that. Okay. So let's uh, orientate this the right way here. And then let's start working on these guys and let's start matching them as best as we can. First, where's my black soot? over here water that down now I can actually bring this one step closer so that hopefully you guys can see what's going on. It's going to have to move a little bit though out of my way
You can see how we start out at the, the base of the rocks here, making that a little bit darker. But the whole idea is to let this stuff mix wet into wet. Uh, a little bit more of my reddish tone. Just, just a hint of it here and there. Now we go into the... <coughs> which one is this? It must be either medium earth. It's either medium earth or it is the... Could be the burnt earth. It's one of these two. I don't think it's the darker. I think this is the one that... Yeah, this is the one that's very red. So here we are. Again, starting out with the darker stuff first. Then we start to get into some of our medium here. That's a little bit of a more of a salmon type color. You let these things kind of merge together. Then our light sand. Letting all that merge together. Does some really neat little spidery things too. I'm gonna check as you magnetize your bases. Oh yeah, all of the Oh let's see, can I actually here we go. So they're all all magnetized. All the movement trays. And then they are well that lets them sit in my my case look at look at that look at that spidery thing that's happening right there look at that that only happens wet into wet you paint it just everybody wants to just dry brush sand there is more to sand than dry brushing ooh that's a ooh somebody's got to write that down that's a, that's a book of wapple type saying there's more to sand than dry brushing there's more to sand than dry brush. I gotta remember that. Let me let me write this thing down here before I forget. If I actually have a pen somewhere, and there is a pen here. And let me see. More to sand than dry brushing. Okay, that would be probably like chapter twenty-seven or something like that. So I'm gonna give the there we go. Just had to close that door. Let's add some more of our light deserty type color to this. But now look at how that just kind of mixed together on its own. Did all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, although my Umber Berserker magnets are reverse polarity. Now the the magnets that I got, they were they were really handy. There was I didn't have to worry about reversed polarity on those. It was like the first time in forever. I didn't have to deal with something like that. Okay, let's see. Does that... Uh, yeah, that reasonably falls in line with what's already there. Let's do the one in back here. Once again, start with the darker stuff. right around our rocks and that's the black suet we're mixing it with the I believe that is either the dark earth or burnt earth it's a little bit hard to tell they kinda the containers all make them look sort of the same and even in some of the my little watercolor trays it's hard to tell them apart This is my mix over here. Just going to get some water into that. And then we start to get here. I'm going to let's let's find out which one of these it is. I'm going to I'm going to take a guess that it's this one. I'm going to take a guess. I think it's this one. I could be wrong. What's this one then? Uh, oh, burnt earth. Okay, I think the dark earth is very much a red color. Yep, that's the right one. Okay, so burnt earth has a little bit of yellowness to it. 
the dark earth is much more of a reddish tone. Now let's go to our lighter color. So that's more of an orange right there. It's kind of an orange green, believe it or not. I know that sounds crazy, but that's kind of what it is. They're almost like a weird color shifting type thing. Now a little bit lighter with some of that almost kind of salmon type color. Wow, I, I think I know what I like here for especially doing any kind of desert basting type stuff. I wish I had these for when I was doing my Harad. That would have been really fun to have. Let's see, Scooter asks, why do people paint a natural rock base? Uh, well, there's no natural rocks on here. This is tree bark. Uh, I wish I could show you, well, I can show you the raw materials. So, <laughs> we have this color. We had this color, we had tree bark, we had gray crackle paint, we had some of this red mud, and that's why it all got primered, and that's why we are painting it now, because there were no natural, oh, and there was resin rock pieces too. So if, if you're wondering why it's being painted, it's because none of it was a natural, there was only outside of bark, there was no other real natural thing on here. So we have to we have to force that perspective just a bit. Oh, here's my lighter stuff. What am I doing? And anyway, we're gonna let that mix wet into wet. Same over here. Um, because that piece of slate in nature to your eye looks just fine because it's gauged against a whole bunch of other much more gigantic things but that same piece of slate with a tiny little miniature on it is basically going to look like oh a piece of slate with a miniature stuck to it you have to miniaturize that piece of slate because it is not going to look you would think that it would be natural enough but it is actually not natural enough so as an example, where is, well, that's going to be too hard to reach. Well, even here, you know, that, this tree branch right here, that still had to be painted because it basically looked like a twig. To make it look bigger than it actually is, as we welcome in Landrast, how are you doing? I'd, and to actually make it match this this had to be painted. There was no way to just leave it as a piece of wood because it literally would have just looked like a twig. So if, if you're kind of wondering why that is, hopefully that's a decent enough answer for you. Ah, look at that. Look at that mixing together, all that fun stuff that it's doing. Can't gotta let it mix wet into wet. Now we'll leave that dark, but we are going to go even a little bit lighter over here. Okay, so there's number two. I see this has, it's dried enough so that I can maybe go back in here with a little bit more of my lighter tones. And there's nothing that says I couldn't mix regular paint with this if I wanted either lighter or just shift it maybe towards green or something like that. I think I could just mix some black in there with it, actually. Oh, there is actually, never mind, there's a green dust. <laughs> what am I talking about? There is actually a green dust color in this, so you could do that, too. Oh, we're just going to throw, this is our black soot. It's mixed with a little bit of that red earth. Now we got Lord Dave in the house. Yeah, Scooter, I hope that's a, a an okay answer for you. Because, un unfortunately, is even though it is a natural thing, it just starts looking, well, it looks like what it was. And when you're all of a sudden now you're putting a tiny horse on top of it, you have to... 
it, it's just like I don't know if you're familiar with forced perspective dioramas and that's an idea where it, you make people believe that there's miles of distance in a space that's just a few inches and there, it's kind of an art form believe me it's an art form and it, it's something that I try and do with my terrain boards or I basically try to simulate distance where there is no distance whatsoever it's one of the reasons why I just when we paint the miniatures this is why we put highlights and shadows and reflected light on them because to just give them a flat color of paint would not be enough uh, let me see hypothetically speaking if a person just emptied their chicken count buying oil paint you could add acrylic resin and flow weight to some pigment powders Um, I have no idea if you've got rubbing alcohol and you got weathering powders well then you can do this and this is what we did back in May and this this video is up on YouTube so you can watch this one so this is done with the weathering powders and rubbing alcohol so if you have those two things you can do what I did on that one Ah, here, let's get this uh, little skull right here. Let's get some lighter stuff over here. And again, we're going to let this mix. We're going to let this mix here. That is the important thing. Look at that little, again, see that little tendril of lighter color that gets in there? That's just, wow. That is spectacular. I really love that. And of course, the number eight round craft brushes are just the perfect thing. So here's a case where we let the rock just be darker instead of highlighting that. But look at look at the uh, light to dark right there. This does because it is more liquid. It gives you a better chance of doing that kind of thing. See that? Look at that little spidery crack right there. Look at that. Now, part of the reason that's happening, too, is the texture that's there. And that was given with the texture paint. That was a little bit of the texture paint in there that lets us do that. All right. One last horsey here, and I think we'll, do, oh, we'll throw just a touch more of our black soot out here. Why not? just a touch more can even water it down we'll mix it with some of our I think that is the dark earth uh, let me see I think uh, I think we're all caught up with the chat there again focusing first the dark stuff and the areas where we want the shadow where we want it to be darker now, yeah, we could paint these guys with acrylics if we wanted to. The The goal was to use oils. But I wanted to hit this first because this way maybe I could put some of the foliage on, on one that, if it's finished. And now this is that... I think that's maybe the medium, and it's it's got that little bit of a yellowish tint to it. Now, back to my... This is my gray right here. Black soot to start with. Then this is our industrial dust right here. Oh, hey there, LV. How's it going? We're, we're kind of expanding on the test that we did over the weekend with the Green Stuff World liquid pigments, which I've really, as far as Green Stuff World stuff that's not a texture roller, this, this would definitely qualify as my favorite stuff. So, so obviously texture rollers are always going to be number one. 
I do actually like the, the UV resin. I kind of like that. That's been pretty handy, I gotta say. But this stuff right here... Oh, look, look at that spidery stuff that it's... Look at this. How hard How hard was that? Just set it there. Look at that natural... Look at how it's just kind of seeping in there. Uh, LV is painting uh, withdrawals. Ran out of primer. That's... Uh, that is never a good thing. Now... If you if you get your badger stino res, you know you can just brush that on. You don't need uh and I'm I'm assuming you don't use the spray can primer or anything like that, but now if you can get yourself even a small thing of badger stino res, you can just brush that on and you are good to go. Look at that. Look at this uh right there. Can you see that? Look at all those those little tender oh look at this. Look at how it's all just mixing together like that. That is unbelievable. That's that's like a watercolor thing. I haven't seen... We used to call that sedimentation back in the day. I haven't seen sedimentation like that since I've been using something like cerulean blue watercolor paint in a sky. Wow. I... Color me impressed. Color me impressed. First it was tanks. Now it's sandy rocks. It, this is so much easier than what we did with this because, well, I mean, again, way less messy. Uh, rubbing alcohol is in short supply and I don't have to fix this. It, it's acrylic. I mean, it, it fixes itself in place. So, to me, it's win on top of win on top of win. Oh, are you spray primer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just, uh, look, the Badger's Dino Res. I think you can even maybe find this on Amazon. And it really doesn't matter what color. I don't really care what it is. Heck, it could be this crazy pink color. Doesn't matter. It all gets covered up. What does Lady B ask? Uh, can you explain how you use your texture rollers with Sculpey? Um, I don't use a clay extruder with the texture rollers. I think I've got, ah, here we go. Now, you don't have to get the clear resin one. You could just use a piece of PVC pipe. It starts out with this, and there's there's tons of articles on the blog. I think I've got like eight articles on the blog of rolling that stuff out. It's pretty simple. You, you literally roll this out like you're rolling out dough, flat, with this one here. And then once you're about ready, you see you've got these little, right here, see those little guides? And now remember, you're on a ceramic tile. That's the other thing, too. You don't be baking that stuff on any cookie sheets or anything that's metal. There's a million reasons why not to and no reasons to do so. You want to use a ceramic tile. Just go to any kind of Home Depot, Lowe's, DIY shop or anything like that and just get that. Look, look at this. Look at that gray that's there. Holy smokes. This is, I mean, it's easier than paint by numbers because you can't get that with paint by numbers. Look at that nifty, look at all the nifty tones you've got there. Uh, let's see, a good time to stock up on Steino Res. Yeah, it will freeze in the cold. That, that we have all learned. Stock up on it now while you can. Uh, it was a bazillion degrees here. It is fortunately no longer a bazillion degrees here. And I don't think it's supposed to be this week. Another reason why I want to try to do a lot of live streaming this week. Now I'm going to get me some even lighter colors in here. Uh, look at the blog then. Yeah, that you're going to want the guides for the roller. Now, <laughs> they made the guides after they saw what I was doing which was basically taking a couple of pieces of mat board and I cut some strips and I glued them. Now I, I taped them to the ceramic tile. Wow, look at this. Look at how that dried. See how you got that darker stuff showing through there? That is just amazing. So I, did, I basically made my own guides and the next thing you know, guides appeared. They, were, they, they started selling those guides, which are they're fantastic. They're amazing. Now here I just mixed some of my sandy color with some of that yellow. 
Now we can start to get a little more variety here. Just a touch more variety in places. Maybe where I feel it's uh, too dark or something. Maybe here there's not a lot going on, even uh, on these little plants here. So this is most definitely, I mean, if you're painting desert stuff, so, okay, where else could this have really freaking been handy? So let's go over here if I can find my, these guys. Yeah, I would have loved having this stuff. For painting these bases, it would have been a thousand times easier. Now, fortunately, I have a whole bunch more of these guys, so we will be doing more sandy stuff. Yeah, that is, wow. Very impressive. Hey, we got a gridlock sis in the house. And Kiwis, how are you doing, Kiwi? Uh, folks, be sure to give gridlock sis a follow. I'm sure you already are. And, and sorry, I, I think you were... I don't know if you were streaming earlier today, but I think you were yesterday. I, I, I know I missed all the streams basically over the weekend. And I missed everything yesterday. Because I was busy moving furniture around in here and, and just stuff. Because I had to basically move all of the historical stuff aside so that I could start doing all the the more current projects. So you can do a little bit of here. Let's uh, get some lighter tones here on our dried foliage bits. Oh, let me see. I hope you're all as well. I've done the silicone molds the last few days. Oh, speaking of which, man, do I have those in here? I, I might have them in here somewhere. But Green Stuff World has a bunch of silicone molds that I'm going to be trying out for basing. They've got these, uh, well, they're tires. There's one of them for tires. And the other one is like display panels and stuff. And the whole idea I was hoping maybe for the Necrons that are coming up. Maybe I could use those. All right, let's compare our colors here. So, yeah, so this one is the Green Stuff World Liquid Pigments. This was weathering powders and rubbing alcohol. Um, I'm pretty sure that 100 out of 99 people would not be able to distinguish those two. And it all started with, with uh, using the rust and then the, over the weekend, that was just the white and some of the industrial on there. Uh, let's see, I've been looking at those for months. If you like them, my wallet is doomed. Uh, they're around somewhere. I have, I could swear they're in, in this room. Oh, I know. I know where they are. Aha. So, so I have these. So this could be interesting for some water thing. That's what they're supposed to be for. Ah, ha, ha. Here we go. Here we go. So there's our tires, which aside from some of my World War II stuff, which could be really handy, but look at these. So industrial grids and fans. That could be very interesting, I think. So we'll give those a shot and see what happens with those. Uh, what does Mini Dreadful say? Yeah, I'm the opposite of Stino Res. I do poorly in the heat. Uh, I was hoping we all cool down. Well, it, yeah, it, it cooled down here, and I was glad that it cooled down gently. <laughs> and not, like, with disasters. Usually that doesn't happen. Is there a, is there a Megan in the house here? Ah, oh, there she is. Oh, Megan, I got your, uh... I got your list so that uh, when you change the settings on that, I was able to see those. So I will check those out. At least now I know I can see them. Okay, that is going to go here. And now we'll go back to these guys. And Actually, look at that. Uh, that skull doesn't look too bad either. Now, I, I might mix some of the white. Oh, yeah. I'll take some of the white industrial and mix that in with this. I'm going to dry this out just a bit. 
it, it almost kind of feels gritty now that it's drying. Boy, that I don't want to ruin that though. Look at that. I just you can't get anything much more natural than that. So let's not destroy that. Let's not mess with that too much. And I think you'll be able to see, especially on this right right there. Look at that. Look at all that nifty stuff that's mixing together all by itself. Uh, it was over two, it was over a hundred today in Massey's S. Whatever we had here, you guys must have there now. Okay. What about this one? Now, let's go grab, like I said, where's the white? And this is what we were using over the weekend, the white dust. Chuck a little tiny bit out there. Boy, and a little bit of this goes a long way. So the last time that I used these powders, ooh, let's see, my terrain is way the heck up here. It was on some of these terrain pieces. See that terrain piece off on the left there? That was the last time that I used this stuff. And again, on the 3D printed terrain, it didn't necessarily work quite the way I was hoping that it would. Now I'm going to take oh just a touch of that white here, mix it with the gray, and see if I can't get a couple of highlights on here. I gotta say I do look at that skull right there. I don't even know if I want to miss it. I, I sort of like that. Actually, I kind of like painting the skulls with this. It gives them that uh, decayed look, for lack of a better term. I'm kind of uh, thinking this could be used for a bunch of other things just besides what I'm thinking of here. There could be potentially a lot more uses for this. That is very impressive what it did with those skulls. Let's look at, at what we got here on, for our skulls. Let's take a little bit more of the white here. So we can maybe separate this from the from our rocks. Ah, look at what that does. Very impressive. I'm just, I know I keep saying it over and over again, but the, the people who know me best, they know that when it comes to things like paint or whatever, that, that what's the old life commercial? Like, uh, give it to Mikey, he hates everything. That That's me, basically. My, my starting point is that I hate all paints, and they have to prove that they just, they don't stink. <laughs> and then once they've proved that they don't stink, they get a second try. And, and then if they actually prove themselves to be useful, then they'll get used all the time. These have definitely... They've gone into the, well, they've proven themselves to be quite useful stage. Uh, let's see, a voice full, full karma missed the beginning. Did you say that sand was a texture? Nope, actually, the sand was a combination of, I wish I, oh, I do have picture. Well, wait a minute. Oh, wait a sec, I can, <laughs> here, let me, uh, let me see if I can get the picture here one second for you. Now, I don't know quite how it's going to show up on the phone. Uh, nope. No, I took it with the... Sorry, I took it with my other camera. You won't be able to see it there. You won't be able to see it there. But some of the material is this. Is this. Where's my tree bark? Is tree bark. Where's my sandy paste here? Where did that go? Some of it is this right here, the crackle paint. And my sandy paste, that seems to have dissipated off into the ether somewhere, like right here. And there we go, earth texture, desert sand. 
Let's uh, get this back out uh, out of the way. So that's impressive what that stuff does. It is really a dusty look. It is a very dusty look. Now I am just going to get some of this brown here. I'm just going to hit the edges of these bases real quick if you don't mind. Because again, remove any distractions. Uh, so if you want to make custom silicone molds, we could make those for days. There's uh, what I'd like to be able to make custom silicone molds of is a certain uh, kind of bolt action type things like some tank tread assemblies that could just be a press mold, a simple, simple pour, simple press mold, just things for destroyed tanks, stuff for scattered terrain. And then, same thing with uh, Lord of the Rings. You know, some dead horses, some dead guys, just to scatter around on the... Some casualties, basically. Can't ever have enough of those. Can never have too many casualties to throw out there. Not only makes the table look great, but it's actually kind of neat. If, the, if you put the casualties where they actually fell, it really does give you a sense of how the whole thing played out. Alright, that's going pretty good. And I think we're pretty well set here along our edges. Let me use the last of this. along this edge here. Again, it eventually will be more like a black, but I'm just, for now, going to hit it with this dark brown, and that should be good enough. Uh, let's see, a cat herder says, uh, but every time I watch your stream, I end up with a shopping cart full of new supplies. My oil paints haven't even shown up yet. Well, now, in the Styrene Syndicate, uh, it was it was a thing known as Gill's Shopping Mart or something like that. And basically, somebody would show something, and the next thing you know, three or four people in a hangout, they're going to buy something. You know, they're looking on Amazon, they're looking on whatever hobby website or something like that. And it was it was always Gill's Shopping Mart or something like that. And, and as soon as somebody mentioned something, everybody else started looking it up. And they all had to have that same thing. Okay, so you. That makes me very happy. You can see a lot of the, the crackle stuff going on here still. We've got our, our skulls working. Let's put this, again, out of harm's way. We don't need these jeweler's blocks here. And I might hit this again. Well, I've got the, the tufts as well. So why would I be screwing around with those? Now, let's just uh, put these things over here. Do we want to do an archer? Do we want to do this guy? 